ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارham ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمال يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله مرحبا بكم جميعا اهلا وسهلا We welcome all of the brothers and the sisters and the families as well as those who are listening online to this conference here in Mashhad al-Rashid in Compton, California. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us all success to be upon that which he is pleased with. and to make this gathering one a benefit and to place it upon our scales on a good on the day of judgment amen <clears throat> in accordance to the theme of the conference obtaining success and prosperity we want to look at some of the verses from the statement or from surah al-mu'minun where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he speaks about the believers in the first verse in surah al-mu'minun Allah azza wa jalla he states qad aflah al-mu'minun that indeed the believers are successful when we speak about obtaining success then know that success comes with iman being a believer believing in allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that who comes along with the belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who are the believers the believers as Allah azza wa jal describes them in surah al-baqarah he says dhalika al-kitabu la rayb fi هدى للمتقين الذين يؤمنون بالغيب ويقيمون الصلاة ومما رزقناهم ينفقون والذين يؤمنون بما أنزل إليه وما أنزل من قبلك والذين يؤمنون بما أنزل إليك وما أنزل من قبلك وبالآخرة هم يوقنون أولئك على هدى من ربهم وأولئك هم المفلحون الله عز وجل he mentions
Allah Azza wa Jal, He mentions in the beginning of Surah Al-Baqarah, this is the book which there is no doubt within it, guidance for those who are the people of piety or righteousness. Those who believe in the unseen, and they establish the prayer, and they spend from that which we have provided them with. Those who believe in that which has been revealed to you, meaning you, O Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And they believe in that which has been revealed from before you, meaning to the previous prophets and messengers. And they have certainty regarding the hereafter. Those are the ones who are upon guidance from their Lord, and those are the ones who are successful. So here, <clears throat> Allah Azza wa Jal gives a description of the believers. And at the end of him describing the believers, he mentions that they are the ones who are successful. They are the ones who are successful. Meaning because of these characteristics, the success is connected to the characteristics. So when a person adorns himself or herself with the characteristics of Iman, this is how the person attains and achieves success. أُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ muflihun. Those are the ones who are successful. <clears throat> Belief in the unseen is believing in the foundations of Iman. That which we find in the, the well-known hadith of Jibreel alayhi salam. When he said, Ya Muhammad, or Naam, Akhbirni an al Islam, inform me about Islam, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he stated, Al Islam, an tashhad an la ilaha illallah, wa anna Muhammad al Rasulullah, wa tuqeem al salah, wa tutiya al zakah, wa tusumma Ramadan, wa tuhuj al bayt, in istatata ilayhi sabila, kala sadaq. So Jibreel salam, he asked the Prophet sallallahu wa sallam, or said, inform me about Islam. And the Prophet sallallahu wa sallam went on to mention the five pillars. Islam is that you testify that none has the right to be worshipped except for Allah. And that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the messenger of Allah, that you establish the prayer, that you pay the zakat, you fast in Ramadan, and that you make the pilgrimage to the house if you have the ability to do so. Jibreel alayhi salam, he said, Sadaq, you have spoken the truth. Then he said, Akhbirni an al-Iman. Inform me about faith. He said, al-Iman, an tu'min billah, wa malaikatihi, wa kutubihi, wa rusulihi, wa al-yawm al-akhir, وَأَن تُؤْمِنْ بِالْقَدْرِ خَيْرِهِ وَشَرِّهِ قَالَ صَدَقْتُ So when Jibreel a.s. he asked the Prophet about Iman, faith, he said faith is to believe in Allah, and to believe in His angels, His books, His messengers, to believe in the last day, and to believe in the qadr, the good of it and the bad of it. He said you have spoken the truth. These matters of Iman are matters of the unseen. Belief in Allah, Allah is unseen. Belief in the Malaika, the Malaika are unseen. Belief in the books, this is unseen in relation to us except for the Quran. We don't have the original Torah, the Injil, the Zabur, we don't have those scriptures that were revealed to those prophets. However, they are mentioned in the Quran, we believe in them. We believe in the messengers. The messengers are unseen in relation to us. 
Even the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We have not seen him. But we believe in him. And we believe in the message that he brought. The belief in the last day, this is a matter of the unseen. And belief in the divine decree. This is also from the matters of the unseen. As some of the Salaf they mention, Al-Qadr Sirullah. That the divine decree is the secret of Allah. The divine decree is the secret of Allah. So believing in the unseen is a part of the characteristics of the believers. And a person who does not believe in the unseen from that which Allah has mentioned, then this individual is not a believer. If a person denies, as an example, the existence of the angels, the existence of prophets and messengers, that they had existed at one point, a person denies the day of judgment, a person denies the divine decree of Allah, a person denies Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as you have individuals who deny even the existence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This individual is not a believer. He doesn't have the foundations of faith, which is belief in the unseen. A person denies the lordship of Allah, or a person denies Allah's right to be worshipped or he denies the beautiful names and lofty attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The person is not a believer. Because these aspects or matters are from Iman billah azza wa jal. As the ulama they mention, and from them, Sheikh Muhammad ibn Salih al-Uthaymeen, rahimahullah ta'ala, that al-Iman billah, that belief in Allah is al-Iman bi wujudihi. Belief in his existence. Wal iman bi rububiyatihi. Belief in the lordship of Allah. Wal iman bi uluhiyatihi. In belief that Allah alone has the right to be worshipped. Wal iman bi asma'ihi wa sifatihi. In belief in the beautiful names and the lofty attributes of Allah. All of this is a part of belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if a person, he rejects this, he denies this, then he has disbelieved in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah azza wa jal, he mentions, إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا بِاللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ ثُمَّ لَمْ يَرْتَابُوا وَجَاهَدُوا بِأَمْوَالِهِمْ وَأَنفُسِهِمْ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ أُولَئِكَ هُمُ الصَّادِقُونَ Another verse where Allah Azza wa Jal is describing the believers. Indeed, the believers are only those who believe in Allah and believe in His Messenger, then they do not have any doubt. And they strive with their wealth and with their lives on the path of Allah. Those are the ones who are truthful. They believe in Allah, they believe in His Messenger. Yani la ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That's the foundation of al-Iman billah. Wal-Iman bi Rasulihi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The testimony of faith that none has the right to be worshipped except for Allah. And the testimony that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the Messenger of Allah. This is the foundation. Because this testimony of faith is not just a verbal testimony, but rather it is a testimony that is established in the heart first and foremost. As al Iman with Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah, Al I'tiqad bil Janan, Wal Qawl bil Lisan. وَالْعَمَلْ بِالْعَرْكَانِ 
يزيد بطاعة الرحمن وينقص بطاعة الشيطان and these are known as the five noons the five noons because at the end of each statement there is a noon or each sentence there is a noon الاعتقاد بالجنان the belief with the heart this is iman الاعتقاد بالجنان the belief with the heart القول باللسان the statement of the tongue والعمل بالأركان and the actions with the body parts actions with the body parts يزيد بطاعة الرحمن it increases with obedience to الرحمن meaning Allah Azza wa Jal وينقص بطاعة الشيطان and it decreases with being obedient to الشيطان so here بارك الله فيكم At the end of each sentence there is a noon. But this is the description and the definition of Iman with Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah. So it is a must that the believer believes in his heart, La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. For if a person says La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah with his tongue, but the belief of that statement is not in his heart, this is the munafiq. The one who outwardly displays Islam, but inwardly he hides a kufr. This is the munafiq. And the munafiq, or the munafiqun, they are from the worst of the people. They are worse than the outward disbelievers. As when you look in Surah Al-Baqarah, Allah Azza wa Jal in the beginning describes Three categories of people. He describes the believers, he, be, he describes the disbelievers, and then he describes the hypocrites. In his description of the believers, few verses. In the description of the believers, few verses. And then in the description of the disbelievers, even fewer verses. But then in the description of the hypocrites, many verses. Showing the severe evil of the munafikeen. Go back to the beginning of Surah Al-Baqarah. And you'll see this description that are mentioned in a number of verses that are more than the verses of the description of the believers and the disbelievers put together. The description of the believers is about four verses. The disbelievers is in about two, and then you go and you find over ten verses describing the hypocrites. Why so many verses describing the hypocrites? Because of the severity of their evil. They are worse than the outward disbelievers. And as Allah Azza wa Jal mentions, That indeed the hypocrites, they are in the lowest depths of the hellfire. The hypocrites. They are in the lowest depths of the hellfire. Allah didn't say the disbelievers, meaning those who are outwardly disbelievers, but the hypocrites, those who say La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah with their tongues, but the iman is not in their hearts. So it is a must that we believe in La ilaha illallah with our hearts, and that our tongues express the iman that is in the heart, and that our body parts display that which we believe in the heart, and that which we express with the tongues. We cannot separate these affairs. For these matters are a part of faith. You cannot separate the belief of the heart from faith. You cannot separate the statement of the tongue from faith. And you cannot separate the actions of the body parts from faith. You cannot separate these matters from faith. (laughs) 
Allah Azza wa Jal, in describing the believers, He said, ثُمَّ لَمْ يَرْتَابُوا And this here is an important description of the believers. Meaning the ones who are successful, that they do not have any doubt. My noble brothers and sisters, it is obligatory that we believe in Islam with certainty. There are four ways that a person can apostate from the religion of Islam. A person can apostate from the religion by way of the statement. A person can apostate from the religion by way of the statement. As an example, a person who curses Allah or curses the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam or a person verbally makes mockery of the religion. This is apostasy by way of the statement. Also, number two, a ridda bin fi'l. Apostasy can take place by way of an action that a person does. Like prostrating to an idol intentionally and willingly. Even if a person is joking around, you can't joke around like this. This is apostasy from the religion. <coughs> a person spits on the Quran willingly, knowingly, intentionally. A person slaughters an animal for the inhabitant of the grave. Seeking nearness to the inhabitant of the grave. Directing any act of ibadah to other than Allah expels a person from the religion. Number three, al bil i'tiqad. Apostasy that takes place by way of the person's belief. A person believes that Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is not the last prophet. And that there are other prophets or other messengers after Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is apostasy from the religion. A person believes that the Quran is incomplete. as is the belief of the Rafidah, that the Qur'an that we have is incomplete. And they have what is known as the Mus'haf of Fatima, which is three times the amount of verses in the Qur'an that we have. For a person to believe this, they have apostated from the religion. As Allah Azza wa Jal mentions, Inna nahnu nanzalna dhikr wa inna lahu lahafidun. That indeed we have revealed the revelation and indeed we will preserve it. There's no such thing as Mus'haf of Fatima that has over 18,000 verses. A person believes that there is someone who is exempt from the sharia of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala just as Al-Khadr was exempt from the sharia of Musa 
as is the belief held by many from the extremists of Ahl al-Tasawwuf, the Sufis, that they are, their mashaykh are exempt from following the sharia of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam because they are on a level of certainty. They're not from the common folk. Or as Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah ta'ala, he mentioned that with the Sufis, they have like three categories. You have al-am, then you have al-khas, and then you have khas al-khas. Al-am, the common folk or the general masses of the people, they are the ones who they are binded by halal and haram. So they have to adhere to the rules and regulations of the commandments and the prohibitions. Then you have the next level up from them, al-khas. They are the elite. For them, there is no such thing as haram, but there is the halal for them. And then you have the elite of the elite. No halal, no haram in relation to them. Anyone knows why? Anyone? Fana? No. Wahdat al wujud. The reason being, because with them, the elite of the elite, they have become one with Allah. Is Allah restricted to halal and haram? No. There are no commandments and prohibitions directed towards Allah. So these individuals, they say, once a person reaches that level of certainty, then he's no longer held accountable for halal and haram. Why? Because he has become one with the Lord. The Lord is the creation and the creation is the Lord. And that's their interpretation of the statement of Allah Azza wa Jal, Wa'bud Rabbaka Hatta Yatiyaka Liyakin. And worship your Lord until certainty comes to you. So they say once certainty comes to the person, he no longer has to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And what's the certainty? The certainty is that the Lord is the creation and the creation is the Lord. There's no difference. So if a person believes the likes of this, and this is the reason why we mention it, if a person believes this, he's no longer a Muslim. Allah Azza wa Jal, He says, لَيْسَ كَمِثْلِهِ شَيْهِ وَهُوَ السَّمِيعُ الْبَصِيرُ That there is nothing similar to him, and he is the all-hearing and the all-seeing. Allah says, وَلَمْ يَكُنْ لَهُ كُفُ وَنْ أَحَدٍ And there is nothing comparable to him. The fourth matter, بَارَكَ اللَّهُ فِيكُمْ Apostasy that takes place by way of doubt. Doubting what's in the Quran. Allah Azza wa Jal, He describes the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam wa khatam al nabiyin and he is the seal of the prophets. The person says, I don't know if he's the last prophet or not. Maybe, 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 I'm not sure. That doubt expels the person from Islam because in reality, the person is doubting what Allah has stated. He doesn't believe with certainty. A person says, he's not sure if the Quran is perfect, free from contradiction. I'm not sure. Apostasy from the religion. Why? Because Allah Azza wa Jal says, "Afala yatadabbaruna al-Qur'an?" Do they not ponder over the Quran? لو كان من إني غير الله لا وجد فيه اختلاف كثيرة. If it was from other than Allah, they would find many discrepancies and contradictions within it. But being that the Quran is from Allah, there are no contradictions in the Quran, and there are no discrepancies in the Quran. And if a person comes across that which seems to be a contradiction, the first thing that is upon him is to believe that it is not a contradiction, number one. 
even though it may appear to be a contradiction. The first thing the person is to believe that it is not a contradiction. The next matter is he is to believe that the deficiency is not in the Quran, but in his lack of knowledge and understanding. As an example, Allah Azza wa Jal, he mentions to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, إِنَّكَ لَتَهْدِي إِلَى صِرَاطٍ مُسْتَقِيمٍ Indeed, you, O Muhammad, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you guide to a straight path. So here Allah Azza wa Jal describes Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as being a guide. Then there's another verse where Allah Azza wa Jal, He states, إِنَّكَ لَا تَهْدِي مَنْ أَحْبَبْتَ وَلَكِنَّ اللَّهَ يَهْدِي مَنْ يَشَاءُ Indeed, you, meaning you are Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you do not guide who you love, but Allah guides whomsoever he wills. A person may come and say, well, this is a contradiction. One verse Allah says, Muhammad is a guide, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Another verse Allah says, Muhammad doesn't guide whoever he wills, or whoever he loves, Allah guides whomsoever he wills. There's no contradiction. Rather, Allah Azza wa Jal is speaking about two different categories of guidance. In the statement where Allah Azza wa Jal says, you guide to a straight path, this is the guidance of direction. Meaning that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he has the knowledge, which is guidance for the people. So he's a guide, if you follow him, because the knowledge that he possesses, from the revelation is guidance. Huda lil muttaqeen, as Allah describes His book. Guidance for those who have taqwa. In the verse where Allah Azza wa Jal negates from the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam the guidance, this is the guidance of success. As guidance is of four different categories. Al Hidayatul Amma, general guidance which is shared by animals, human beings, jinns, and the likes, meaning being guided to that which is beneficial for you, and to stay away from that which harms you. When there's a forest fire, the animals don't stay there, they run out of the forest, fleeing from the fire. That's guidance. Running away from that which harms them. When an animal is thirsty, the animal goes to the river and drinks. And that's guidance, general guidance, to do that which benefits. But when the animal sees the crocodile there, he's cautious. That's guidance. That's guidance. But that's general guidance. It has nothing to do basically with the religion. And then you have Hidayatul Irshad, the guidance of direction. And this is the knowledge. The Prophet Sallallahu was telling he has this type of guidance. He was a guide, meaning the knowledge he possessed and taught to the people is guidance. But then you have Hidayat al tawfiq which is in the hands of Allah alone. And that is the person being given the success to follow the knowledge. The Prophet doesn't control that, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The Prophet's duty is to call the people and convey the message. As for who is going to accept the message, the Prophet didn't control that. So when Allah Azza wa Jal said to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, indeed you don't guide who you love, this was in relation to his uncle Abu Talib. As the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he called his uncle to La ilaha illallah, even when he was upon his deathbed. Ya Ammi, kul la ilaha illallah. Kalima uhaju biha anka in the Allah yom al qiyamah. Oh my uncle, say La ilaha illallah, a statement I can defend you with on the day of judgment in front of Allah. Then it was said to his uncle, أَتَرْغَبْ عَنْ مِلَّةِ عَبْدِ الْمُطَلِبِ Are you going to turn away from the religion of Abd al-Muttalib? The Prophet sallallahu kept repeating to his uncle to say, La ilaha illallah. But what was the end result? His uncle, he died upon the millah of Abd al-Muttalib. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he wanted guidance for his uncle. But his uncle did not accept Islam. So this is the negation of guidance here. When well, Allah says, you don't guide who you love, but Allah guides whomsoever He wills. The Prophet loved for his uncle to be guided. He had a natural love for his uncle. His uncle, he raised him. His uncle protected him. 
But Allah did not decree for his uncle to accept the guidance. And that's due to a deviation that was in the heart of the Prophet's uncle. The point, barakallahu fikum, for a person to doubt anything in the religion that is known to be the religion, then this individual has apostated from the religion. As Allah mentions, thumma lam yartabu, then they do not have any doubt. This is from the characteristics of the believer. From Iman, as mentioned earlier, that which is connected to the heart, that which is connected to the tongue, and that which is connected to the body parts. And this is seen in the narration of Abu Huraira radiallahu an, where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam stated, Al-Iman bid'un, wa sab'una shu'bah, o sittuna shu'bah, فَأَعْلَاهَا أَوْ أَفْضَلُهَا قَوْلْ لَا إِلَهَا إِلَى اللَّهَ وَأَدْنَاهَا إِمَاتَةُ الْأَذَى أَنِ الطَّرِيقُ وَالْحَيَاءَ شُعْبَةٌ مِنَ الْإِيمَانِ Abu Hurayra رضي الله عنه He mentioned that the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم stated that Iman is 70 something or 60 something branches And as a side note, there's no contradiction between these two wordings. Because if you have 70 something, you have 60 something. Correct? If you have $70 in your pocket, you have $60 in your pocket. Right or wrong? And if you have $60 in your pocket, it doesn't mean you don't have $70. Okay, so somebody said, oh, that's a contradiction. One narration says 70, one narration. No. There's no contradiction in Islam. No contradictions in Islam. Alhamdulillah. Again, if we don't understand, don't blame the text. The blame returns back to the individual's lack of knowledge. Wallahi, there's an answer. There's an answer. So one word he mentions 70 something, one word he mentions 60 something. The point the Prophet said, the highest branch of faith or the, the most virtuous branch of faith, the statement, La ilaha illallah. And the lowest branch of faith is to remove something harmful from the road. And shyness is a branch of faith. Walad. Ya walad. In this su'al laka. Tujibuni. نحن نقول الإيمان متعلق بالقلب والقول والعمل في هذا الحديث أين القول وما هو متعلق بالقلب والعمل قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم الإيمان بدعون وستون الشعبة فأعلاها قولا إلا عين الله وأدناها إماطة الأذى أن الطريق والحياة شعبة, شعبة من الإيمان طيب بيّن لي فهمت السؤال أولا طيب بيّن لي أي أحسنت إماطة الأذى أن الطريق هذا متعلق بالجوارح نعم ثم شعبة من الإيمان أحسنت لأن الحياة من القلب ثم أحسنت جزاك الله خير The question I asked our young brother in this narration the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم mentioned that faith is 60 something or 70 something branches the highest Branch, the statement of La ilaha illallah, the lowest branch is to remove something half move from the path. And shyness is a branch from the branches of faith. So the belief of Ahlul Sunnah is that Iman is connected to the heart, the statement, and the actions. 
So where do we find this in this narration? So he mentioned, as for the removal of something harmful from the roadway or the path, this is connected to the actions. And as for that which is connected to the heart, then it is the statement that shyness is a branch of faith, because shyness begins in the heart. And then as for the statement, then that's clear. The statement of la ilaha illallah is connected to the tongue of the statement. Barakallah fiqum. That narration, Barakallah fiqum, is a refutation against the murjia. Those who say that iman is only a belief of the heart and a statement of the tongue. They are the murjia of the fuqaha. And then you have the ghulat min al murjia, the extremists from the murjia. Those who say that iman is just i'tiraf bil qalb, acknowledgement of the heart. And the dangers of that statement is that according to that definition, then Iblis would be a believer. If we say that Iman is just an acknowledgement of the heart, then Iblis acknowledge Allah as his Lord. Rabbi bima akhwaitani. My Lord, because you have led me astray. He, des he described Allah as being his Lord. And likewise, Fir'aun. He will be considered a believer because within his heart he knew that what Musa came with was the truth. So the, the hadith that Iman is 60 something branches, 70 something branches, one of the strongest of the proofs that's against the murji'ah. And also, Barakallah Fikum, it is a proof against the khawarij and the mu'tazila. From what angle? We already see the angle of the murija because they say iman is just a belief of the heart or a belief of the heart and a statement of the tongue. Actions are not from iman. So here the Prophet mentioned an action being a part of iman. Imatatul adha and it tariq. However, how is this narration also a refutation against the khawarij and the murtazila? Anyone? Barath al-Ukhra? The, kh no, the khawarij and also the murajiyah but the khawarij they do not view that iman increases and decreases the khawarij believe that iman is a belief of the heart statement of the tongue actions of the body parts just like ahl sunnah so one may be deceived by that but there is more what else was mentioned with the five noons Yazidu bita'at al-Rahman wa yanqus bita'at al-Shaytan That right there is important that you have to mention that. Why? Because the Khawarij do not believe in the increase and the decrease of Iman. So when you're missing it, one thing, you're missing everything to them. This is why the narrations like La yazni azani hina yazni wa huwa mu'min that the one who is committing zina, he's not a believer at the time of committing zina. Because they don't view iman to be strong iman, weak iman. Iman is just one thing. If you have it, you have it. If you don't have it, you don't have none of it. Yankus bi ta'atil shaitan or yankus bin ma'asi. منهم من يقول المعاصي تخرج صاحبها أن الملح حتى الصغائر منهم ولكن ما هو المشهور عنهم الذي يرتكب الكبائر قد خرج من ملة الإسلام والمعتزلة يقولون خرج من ملة الإسلام ولكن لم يدخل في الكفر هو في منزلة بين منزلتين ولكن في الآخرة هم يوافقون الخوارج ويقولون هؤلاء أصحاب النار خالدين فيها لا يخرجون منها أبدا فوافق فهؤلاء يوافقوا الخوارج في شيئين بأنهم قد خرجوا من الإسلام وفي الآخرة هم مخلدون في النار 
لا يخرجون منها so the khawarij barak Allah fikum they believe that when a person commits sins some of them even say the minor sins the person has left Islam because with them there is no such thing as different levels of faith here the prophet says iman is 60 something branches 70 something branches showing that all the matters of iman are not all the same they are different levels of faith the khawarij don't believe in there being different levels of faith so you have from them those who say that if you commit a, a minor sin, you have left the fold of Islam, you're no longer in Muslim. Who's going to remain then? The Prophet ﷺ was to mention, كُلُّ بَنِي آدَمْ All of the children of Adam, they constantly sin. But, وَخَيْرُ خَطَّائِينَ أَطَّوَّابُونَ But the best of the sinners are those who repent. In any event, بارك الله فيكم, the khawarij, that which is well known on them, that the one who commits the major sin has left the fold of Islam. And the Muratazila, they say the same, except that they don't say that the person has entered into disbelief, but rather he's in a station between two stations. But in the hereafter, he will enter into the hellfire. So the Khawarij, or rather the Muratazila, agree with the Khawarij in two matters. That the one who commits the major sin has left the fold of Islam, and in the hereafter, he will be in the hellfire to abide therein forever, and he will never come out. At the end, it's, the matter is the same. He's in the hellfire forever. But what did the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam say? Shafaati li ahl al min ummati. They deny the shafaa. My intercession is for the people who have committed major sins from my, my nation. Here the Prophet Sallallahu is saying that Wa alaykum as rahmatullah That he will be able to intercede for the major sinners of this Ummah. To intercede to bring them out of the hellfire. Or to prevent them from entering to the hellfire. He'll be able to intercede for them. The Khawarij say, no, they're in the hellfire for Allah. The people of major sins. He's not a believer at the time of committing zina. So how do we explain that? One, one way we don't explain it, it was the explanation of the Khawarij. That the man is a kafir at the time he's committing zina. Definitely don't explain with that explanation. And it is, it, no, so you be amazed. A lot of our brothers from Ahlul Sunnah wa Jama'ah, they understand the hadith to be that way. That well, not that he's a kafir, but at the time he's doing the act, he's not a Muslim. That's a big mistake. Was meant that he's not a believer at the time of committing the act of zina, meaning he's not one who has complete iman. And who are not qasul iman, he's deficient in faith. And not that the person is a disbeliever who has left the fold of Islam, he has to retake his shahada and the likes. So that is a gross misunderstanding to think that the narration means that the person is no longer a Muslim at the time. One narration mentions that Iman hovers over his head like a cloud. And when he leaves it, it returns back to him. Meaning he's not a complete believer. He's in a state of deficiency and weakness. And likewise, a sadaq, hina yasruq. He's not a believer. The one who is stealing is not, a, is not a believer at the time of stealing. Or the one who was using intoxicants, he's not a believer at the time of using intoxicants. Meaning he's not a person who has complete iman. But he's still a Muslim. He has the origin of faith there. He's still a Muslim. However, he's not at the best he can be in his belief. Because it is the weak, the weakness of faith which caused him or her to fall into those sins in the first place. And not that the person disbelieves in Islam. As for the one who believes that these acts are permissible, then this individual is a disbeliever even if he doesn't commit these acts. Why? Because he's making halal what Allah has made haram. And that will go back to the third matter of apostasy. Apostasy due to the belief. 
When a person believes that what Allah has made halal was haram, or that what Allah has made haram is halal, that belief removes the person or expels the person from Islam. Yunkiruna. And the, the other narrative, the hadith of uh, the, the, the hadith of Abu Sa'id al Khudri, the one who in the room, uh, he leaves the hell for him and lam yamal khayran khat. Meaning he has the lowest of the faith to, to the point it's as if he didn't do any act, any acts of good. And there is another narration where it mentions how all of the the descendants from the Muslims they will leave the hellfire. If I'm not mistaken, the word is "wala yabqa fi na illa man habasahu al-Quran," and no one remains in the hellfire except for the one who the Quran has imprisoned him to be in the hellfire forever. Meaning the kafir. Inna Allah la yaqfiru an yushraqa bihi wa yaqfiru madhuna dalika li man yasha. Yani rad al khawarij. That indeed Allah does not forgive that partners are associated with him, but he forgives other than that. Zina is other than shirk. Shubur khamar is other than shirk. Stealing is other than shirk. Homosexuality is other than shirk. I know that may be hard for some people, you know. It was, it was amazing. It was some of the, a person walks by a gay bar, stop for the lies. Tighten up his fist, he's walked by a church, nothing. Well, I had a shirk is worse than homosexuality. <laughs> and then, of course, I'm not encouraging for anyone to go run into the, the gay bar and just take matters into his own hands, like, you know, vigilante Charles Bronson type stuff. No, nobody's encouraging this. This is not our land. We don't have authority here. But I'm saying the feeling within the person, he may see a man kissing another man, astaghfirullah, you know, he, he's, the veins popping out his neck. But when he see the people going in the church, praise Jesus, hey, good morning, how you doing? You know, it's no feeling of like, subhanAllah, something, a crime is being committed. Shirk is the greatest crime. With the, the uh, Luke man, he said to him, Ya bunayya la tushrik billah, inna shirk la dhumun azim. Oh my son, don't associate partners with Allah. Indeed, he associating a partner with Allah is the greatest of the oppression. So we have to hate what Allah hates, love what Allah loves. Hate what the Messenger hates, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and love that which the Messenger loves. All of this is a part of Iman. Yes, according to some of the ulama, that if a person dies upon minor shirk, that it is similar to the kabair, the major sins, and that the person is under the mashia of Allah. And they interpret that verse uh, in Surah Al-Nisa to mean the major shirk. However, there are ulama who say that the shirk that is mentioned in the verse is general. So it includes major and minor shirk. However, the difference is that the person who enters into the hellfire due to minor shirk, eventually he'll come out. Because the minor shirk does not nullify the person's iman in totality. It makes the iman deficient. We have the statement of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam: "Akmalu al-mu'minin imanan, ahsanuhum khuluqan." As we're speaking about the believers are the ones who are successful, and we're speaking about some of the characteristics of the believers. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam mentioned the most complete of the believers in faith, the best of them in character. If you want to be successful, then you be a believer. You want to be a complete believer, have good manners and good character. First and foremost, you must have good character with Allah Azza wa Jal. And how do we have good character with Allah? That we worship Allah Azza wa Jal alone, not making any partners for Him. This is the best character and behavior that we can have with our Creator.
subhanahu wa ta'ala adhering to his legislation this is having good character with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala using the ni'm that Allah has bestowed upon us for good things I heard uh, a Sheikh Sulaiman al-Ruhayli hafidhahullah ta'ala he mentioned and other than him that a person who uses the bounties of Allah to commit sins with them, this is su adab, su adab with Allah Azza wa Jal. A person who uses the favors that Allah has given him to commit sins with them, this is bad mannerisms with Allah. As an example, Allah has given you eyesight. That's a ni'mah from Allah. You're looking at the haram. That's bad manners. Because Allah didn't give you eyesight to look at pornography. Allah didn't give you eyesight to look at falsehood. Allah gave you eyesight to use, to use the eyesight for the good things. Like reading the Quran. That's the best of what we can do with our eyesight. Reading and studying the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Looking at that which is lawful for us to look at. But when we use our eyesight for the haram, this is bad mannerisms with Allah. Allah, He blessed you to have hearing. You don't use your hearing to listen to music. Or to listen to backbiting and slandering. Or to listen to falsehood. This is bad mannerisms with Allah. But you use your hearing to listen to the Qur'an. You use your hearing to listen to the sunnah being spoken. You use your hearing to listen to the good things. Not for evil. And other than that, the virtues and blessings of having touch, being able to walk, all of your senses, even wealth that Allah has given you, don't use your wealth for the haram. That's bad mannerisms with Allah. Allah bless you with the wealth. Use the wealth to pay your zakat. If you are the people who have to pay zakat. Use your wealth to give sadaqah and to help the poor. Use your wealth to build the masjid. Or to maintain the masjid that is already built. Use your wealth to build a school. So that the Muslim children have a place to study their religion. And to be protected and preserved. And they don't have to go into the schools and the education system of the disbelievers and then become corrupted. Use your wealth for these things. But you find individuals wasting their wealth on that which is a harm. Muslims buying cigarettes is wasting a wealth and on top of that is a harm. Muslims using their wealth to go into contracts of interest. And other than that, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Mentioned three things that Allah dislikes. وَكَرِهَ لَكُمْ قِيلَ وَقَالَ وَكَثْرَةَ السُّؤَالِ وَإِضَاعَةَ الْمَالِ That Allah, He dislikes for you three matters. Gossip, He said, it was said. He dislikes for you excessive questioning. And He dislikes for you the wasting of wealth. Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar. Allah Akbar. Also having good character, Barakallah Fikum, is having good character with your own self. And this is by way of not harming yourself with sins and acts of disobedience that are between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
as the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam mentioned, وَأَتْبِعِ السَّيِّئَةَ الْحَسَنَةَ تَمْحُوهَا And follow up the bad deed with a good one, it will wipe it out. Be mindful, ikhwan wa akhawat, to have good manners with yourself, especially when in the privacy of your homes. As we must remember that Allah Azza wa Jal, He sees us and He hears us and He is aware of that which we do. Don't harm yourself when you are alone. As the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, He mentioned a people from this Ummah that they have good deeds similar to the mountains, the white mountains of Tihama. However, Allah will make their deeds Haba'an manthura, like scattered particles of dust. And Hudayfa, he asked, described these people to us. And the Prophet sallallahu mentioned they are from us. And they take from the night that what you take from the night. But then he mentioned, إِذَا خَلُوا بِمَحَارِمِ اللَّهِ أَوْ كَمَا قَالَ sallallahu alayhi wa that when they go into the privacy with the prohibitions of Allah, they violate them. They violate them. This is a person, he's harming himself. He's not having good manners with himself or herself. Be mindful of the shaitan whispering to you after you have fallen into sin that there is no hope for you that Allah is not going to forgive you. And then you can remain upon the sin. Allah Azza wa Jal mentions, وَلَا تُولُكُ بِأَيْدِيكُمْ إِلَى التَّهْلُكَ Don't let your hands be the cause of your destruction. Don't harm yourself. How? Some of the Mufassirun, they mention that a person commits a sin, Allah, uh, 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 the person commits a sin, violating Allah's law, the shaitan says, Allah is not going to forgive you. So he remains upon the sin and then destroys himself with his own hands. Allah Azza wa Jal mentions, قُلْ يَا عِبَادِيَ الَّذِينَ أَصْرَفُوا عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهَمْ لَا تَقْنَطُوا مِنْ رَحْمَةِ اللَّهِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَغْفِرُ الدُّنُبَ جِمِعًا And lastly, oh, as Allah mentions, O oh, say, O oh, my servants who have wronged themselves, do not despair from the mercy of Allah. Allah forgives all sins. And lastly, we must have good character with the people, especially one another as Muslims. This is from Iman. And this leads to success. Having good character and mannerisms of one amongst one another. Dealing with one another with gentleness and kindness. Having nasiha, sincerity for one another. Wanting good for one another. لا يؤمن أحدكم حتى يحب لأخيه ما يحب لنفسي من الخير. None of you truly believes until he loves for his brother that which he loves for himself from the good things. All of these matters are from iman. And being a believer, having iman, is success. Is success. Shalom ta'ala, we'll stop at this point. Whatever is correct, the praise is for Allah Azza wa Jal alone. And whatever is incorrect, it is for myself. Wa subhanaka Allah muhammadik. Ashadu an la ilaha ila ant. Astaghfiruka wa atubilik. Jazakumullah khair.